Did you know that there's a line of small radar systems out there that could see you on the ground up to 15 kilometers away? Some are used in the detection of drones at airports, some are used on the Korean DMZ. They also do some other pretty amazing things as well, but first, some backstory. A company called Plextech was established in 1989 to provide electronic and communications design services during the booming new age of mobile telecommunications technology. Their wireless expertise subsequently led to innovations outside the mobile telecommunications sector such as Formula One telemetry, hospital patient monitoring systems and stolen vehicle detection products. In the early 2000s, Plextech started to invest in its own internal product ideas, developing substantial lines of intellectual property in three main areas, ground surveillance radar, vehicle telematics and street lamp monitoring and control systems. In 2002, Plextech had an idea to make two types of blighter radars, the B202 and B400. Blighter stood for Battlefield Lightweight E-Scan Radar, and these designs were E-Scan or electronic scanning that had no moving parts unlike other types of radars that spin. The British Army was using an equivalent radar at the time known as M-Star. This was made by a French company called Tarlis. M-Star entered UK service in early 1991 after a development phase lasting almost a decade. It was essentially a lightweight, all-weather battlefield Doppler radar that operated in the J-band, and was used by artillery observers to acquire and engage targets in bad visibility or at night. It was capable of detecting, recognising and tracking helicopters, slow-moving fixed-wing aircraft, tracked and wheeled vehicles as well as troops. The radar display was an electroluminescent screen that could be overlaid with a map grid and it could show areas of ground visible to the radar as well as areas that were masked by terrain. It could detect targets out to 30 kilometers or 19 miles with a maximum range of 42 kilometers or 26 miles. At half the weight of the M-Star system, the Blighter B202 made an impression with the Ministry of Defence at the 2008 Farnborough Air Show, with Plextech securing a £1.75 million contract for an urgent order for the British Armed Forces. By 2012, Plextech were producing the B202 and B400 series of radars. The B202 was the manned portable radar that complemented M-Star. It was a tripod mounted system which was supplied with a rugged laptop and powered by batteries. The B400 was for fixed installations that weren't designed to be carried around. The B202 was marketed as the lower cost portable variant that utilised a printed antenna system for detection of people at 3km and vehicles at 8km. The B400 was marketed as the better performing fixed location variant that could detect people at 10km and vehicles at 32km. The B400 could detect targets moving at speeds of only half a kilometre per hour. All control aspects and signal processing is done in the radar units themselves, so they only require a PC or PDA as an interface or display. Electronic beam scanning technology enables 90 to 360 degrees of horizontal coverage and their higher resolution display, compass and GPS systems are used for discrimination of multiple targets which are output on a map overlay. The radars operate in the KU International Radio Location Band with a transmit power of 1 watt, making them difficult to detect. They can even ignore ground terrain, foliage and buildings, and clutter filtering allows static objects to be suppressed, leaving only moving targets on the display. Adjusting the sensitivity of the radar and the use of Doppler filtering removes false alarms such as precipitation and animals. The location, speed and direction of a target can be identified by combined radar, GPS and compass data, and once highlighted, targets can be inspected via camera. Around this time, Blighter radars had already been operational in South Korea for over a year and were providing failure-free border surveillance on the DMZ, separating North and South Korea. The radar systems there provide constant surveillance for the detection of North Korean troops, whether it be small raiding parties or mass invasion. These radars can detect humans, vehicles or low-flying aircraft incursions. 
It's worth noting that the B-400, like many other ground surveillance radars, is only two-dimensional. This means you only get range and azimuth to a target, distance and position on the horizontal axis. Therefore, the radars on the Korean DMZ only have azimuth and range information when it comes to detecting low-flying aircraft incursions. There's no altitude information. A radar alone can only detect movement. To enable a radar system to join the dot so to speak, or provide the target identification and threat detection we've looked at, tracking software is also required. Depending on the type, model and manufacturer of the radar, this tracking software can live inside the radar itself, or run on a separate PC or server. Radar tracking software can be relatively simple or extremely complex. It depends on the environment the radar is providing detection coverage over, and the types of targets being detected. The tracking software will look at individual movements or detections from the radar, and using pre-configured settings, either associate similar detections into a track, i.e. join the dots together, or it'll discard random detections. Some tracking software systems will show these random detections to the radar system operator, whereas other tracking software will hide these random detections, leading to a cleaner display. Once the software has associated similar radar detections together into a single track or target, useful information can be obtained, such as the target speed and heading. This target information can also be used to direct a PTZ camera to follow the target to help with its identification. If a radar is three-dimensional, its associated tracking software can also give the altitude of a target. A radar company can write their own software, or buy in third-party tracking software. Cambridge Pixel, who makes software, confirmed they work with Plextech and their blighter radars back in September 2014. Cambridge Pixel's software tracker was optimised for use with the Blighter B400 series radars to provide target track identification, heading and speed, as well as multi-hypothesis tracking, to reduce nuisance alarms. The tracking software receives radar detections from the Blighter radar and correlates information across multiple scans to create tracks that describe the position and dynamics of targets of interest. The tracks are then reported back to the Blighter View command and control software platform. Back in the Second World War, before the advent of computers, human operators were radar trackers, joining radar plots together on their radar scopes and monitors with grease pencils. Sometimes the image would be projected onto larger screens or onto a wall. By late 2015, with Blighter previously being the name given to a product range of radars made by Plextech, a separate company called Blighter Surveillance Systems Limited was created. Its sole purpose was to sell the Blighter product range. The company name Blighter Surveillance Systems Limited is often shortened to just Blighter, which can be confusing. As I said earlier, the B-400 is a ground surveillance radar designed for detecting people and vehicles, but could be used for detecting low-flying aircraft. Now, there's a distinct difference between low-flying aircraft and another threat that is growing on both the civilian side as well as the military side, and that is the drone. So, 2015 saw Blighter Surveillance Systems, Chess Dynamics and Enterprise Control Systems joined forces to develop a powerful, highly effective and fully integrated anti-UAV defence system to combat the growing threat of malicious micro, mini and larger unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. The anti-UAV defence system, or ORDS, integrates the new Blighter A400 series KU-band electronic scanning air security radar with Chess Dynamics stabilised electro-optic director infrared and daylight cameras and video tracking software, and a directional radio frequency inhibitor or jammer system from enterprise control systems to detect, track, classify, disrupt and neutralise UAVs at ranges of up to 8 kilometres. The ORD system is even effective against so-called Group 1 micro UAVs at ranges of up to 2 kilometres and Group 1 mini UAVs at ranges of several kilometres. The system was tested in South Korea along the DMZ, as well as successful trials in France and the UK. The A400 radar is another electronic scanning radar with Doppler processing, allowing all-weather, 24-hour detection of both fast and slow-moving micro and mini UAV targets with unsurpassed ground clutter suppression for near-horizon operation. 
It's mounted on a highly accurate stabilised pan and tilt director, combined with the electro-optic infrared day and night cameras and state-of-the-art digital video tracking technology to automatically track the UAV and classify the target. The smart radio frequency inhibitor selectively disrupts various command and control communication links employed by the UAV. Looking at photos of both the B400 and A400, we can surmise that the newer A400 radar is clearly based on the earlier B400. They're virtually identical, with the exception of a different paint job. It can also be surmised that like the B400, the A400 is a two-dimensional radar. They sweep from left to right and work on 15.7 to 17.2 GHz. A single radar panel will provide 90 degrees of coverage, so angular coverage is provided by linking these modular units, which can provide a full 360 degree view. What's interesting to note is that two units together providing a 180 degree view actually consists of a radar and an auxiliary unit which is just used as an antenna. Two radars and two auxiliary units combined give the full 360 degree view. The radar head is also supplied with three different types of antennas. M10S and W20S antennas feature elevation beam widths of 10 and 20 degrees respectively and provide detection in either normal terrain to 10 km or hilly terrain to 5 km. N5S antennas concentrate the elevation beam width of the radar down to 5 degrees, extending the radar's detection range for a walking person out to 15 km. The transmitter power is 1.26 watts, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you look at the gain these antennas provide, the radars have an extremely high EIRP level. For example, the M10S antennas provide plus 23 dBi of gain, meaning a theoretical mean radiated power of 631 watts. Radar systems like this use what is known as radar CFAR, or constant false alarm rate, which is like a radio scanner's squelch control. The role of the constant false alarm rate circuitry is to determine the power threshold above which any radar return can be considered to probably originate from a target, as opposed to a spurious source. If this threshold is too low, more real targets will be detected, but at the expense of increased numbers of false alarms. However, fewer targets will be detected if the threshold is too high, but the number of false alarm rates will also be low. In most radars, the threshold is set to achieve a required probability of false alarms, and either a radar's operator or the radar software has to set a threshold. Anything that pops up above the threshold is a target. There are two sources of noise in a radar system. There's internal noise and external noise. External noise could be something as simple as trees blowing in the wind or the spinning fans of air conditioning units, and internal noise is the noise emitted by the components within the radar itself. Between the 19th and 21st of December 2018, hundreds of flights were cancelled at Gatwick Airport near London, following reports of drone sightings close to the runway. This affected 1,000 flights and 140,000 passengers. There were previous drone incidents at Gatwick on the 3rd and 9th of July 2017, but the latter wasn't made public until the 15th of October that year. The newspapers, online news outlets and television reports were filled with photos of what by now should be a familiar system to you on the roofs of Gatwick Airport, the old system with a blighter A400 radar. After these incidents, the CAA rushed to implement the old system on the roof. As well as the old system with the blighter radars, other anti-drone equipment was seen up there as well. From the research I've done, the blighter A400 radar was the only radar to be used on the roof of Gatwick to detect drones. September 2020 saw the launch of a new system, the A800 3D drone detection radar for land, air and sea surveillance from blighter. The radar's main function is to detect and locate commercial hobby drones in 3D space. Blighter said that the A800 detects surface targets on land or water, flying targets with full 3D coordinates, something the A400 can't do, and high-flying targets above and outside the central 3D measurement cone. You can see that this radar head has one distinct difference. There's three antennas on the front as opposed to two, and Blighter are calling this system 3D. We know that the A400 and B400 are 2D radars, so what does the addition of the third antenna tell us? 
The A800 must have one transmitter and two receivers. The transmit antenna is in the middle, with the receive antennas providing 40 degrees of altitude data as well as 90 degrees of azimuth data. Blighter describes the radar as an amplitude comparison monopulse. You get a 2D lower section of detection, a 3D middle section of detection, and an upper 2D section of detection. For uses such as civil airports, the A800 is a complete game changer compared to the A400 system. Not only does it provide 3D detection of drones, it also uses AI and micro Doppler signature analysis to gain more information. For example, a standard radar would detect the movement of the fixed body and arms of a drone, but the micro Doppler can detect the movement of propellers, which would reflect a distinct return back. So I hope you enjoyed that dive into a radar rabbit hole. If you did, let me know in the comments below, and why not consider hitting the join button to support the channel.